I'm Professor Mahindra Handore, working as a faculty of mathematics in KJS Educational Institute, uh, Trinity College of Engineering and Research, Pune. On behalf of our institute, we would like to support for the students who are preparing for coming MHD CET examination. So, today we will discuss a topic of probability distribution. So, first of all, I am going to explain you probability mass function. So, we will revise certain things and then we will solve the examples from previous CET examinations. So, probability mass function. If a discrete random variable x takes the values x1, x2, x3, xn, then each xi we assign a number pi which is equal to p that is the probability of each xi is said to be probability mass function if it satisfies the following two main conditions number one the probability is always lies between 0 to 1 for all i running from 1 to dot 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 n and number two sum of probabilities i over 1 to n is always equal to 1. If these two conditions are satisfied, then the probability function P is called probability mass function. Next up, we will define probability distribution. The set of order pair xi with pi or all i running from 1, 2, 3 up to n is called probability distribution of a random variable x. Now, we will move further and we will discuss cumulative frequency distribution of a discrete random variable x. Cumulative distribution function for a random variable x is defined as f of x is equal to probability of x less than or equal to x is nothing but the cumulative distribution function of a random variable x. Next, we will discuss the expected value and variance of a discrete random variable. So, mean value or expected value, mean value or expected value of a random variable x is denoted as mu or e of x and is defined as e of x is equal to summation of xi into pi over i running from 1 to n and variance of x variance of x is denoted by sigma square or variance of x and is defined as summation of xi square into pi minus summation of xi into pi whole square this is also represented as expected value of x square minus summation of xi into pi can you guess what is summation of xi into pi? Yes, correct. Summation of xi into pi is nothing but expected value of x. So it can be written as expected value of x whole square also. So this is nothing but the variance of x, which is obtained by this formula expected value of x square minus e of x whole square. And if you take root of this, that is also called standard deviation. Now, we will discuss about probability density function that is also an important term probability density function in short we can say PDF which is associated with continuous random variable a real value function f of x is said to be probability density function for a continuous random variable x if it satisfies following two main conditions Number one, f of x is greater than or equal to zero for all x belongs to R. And number two, integration of f of x over the range minus infinity to plus infinity is always equal to correct one. If any function f of x satisfies these two conditions, called probability density function of a continuous random variable x, then we will discuss CDF for continuous random variable x. As we discussed earlier, cumulative distribution function for a 
discrete random variable now we define unity distribution function for a continuous random variable and which is defined as f of x is equal to probability of x less than or equal to x is equal to integration of f of x into dx over the range minus infinity to x so this is nothing but cumulative distribution function so cumulative distribution function for a continuous random variable so these are the main points that we have revised and now we'll solve the example based on these points from previous CT examinations so we have started with probability mass function then probability distributions cumulative distribution function of a discrete random variable then mean value or expected value variance of a discrete random variable then we have discussed probability density function for a continuous random variable and cumulative distribution function is also associated with continuous random variable now let's solve some example from previous CT examinations so that you will get idea for the preparation of this topic this is the first example the cumulative distribution function f of x is associated with the following probability density function f of x is equal to 3 into 1 minus 2x square when x lies between 0 to 1 and this function is 0 otherwise is k into x minus 2x cube upon 3 then k is so we have to find the value of k so what is given here the cumulative distribution function is given for this probability density function so we we'll start with the definition of cumulative distribution function of a continuous random variable so you know by definition f of x is equal to probability of x less than or equal to x cumulative distribution function f of x is equal to this which is equal to integration over minus infinity to x f of x into dx but see this function is defined over 0 to 1 otherwise the function f of x is given 0 for example let's see here this is the range from minus infinity to plus infinity but here function probability density function is defined over 0 to 1 so here it is 0 here it is 1 so it is defined between 0 to 1 otherwise when x is greater than 1 and x less than 0 it is given 0 so this function is given here now we want to use the limit here so lower limit is obviously 0 because from minus infinity to 0 the value is 0 there so we'll take lower limit as a 0 and upper limit is x and over this range function is given to you 3 into bracket 1 minus 2x square into dx now we will evaluate this integration with respect to x so we know integration of 1 with respect to x is x minus 2 as it is and we will evaluate the integration of x square so what is integration of x square correct integration of x square is x cube divided by 3 over the range 0 to x then you take x is equal to upper limit means it will remain same x minus 2x cube upon 3 and when you put lower limit the value of this will become 0 so this is the cumulative distribution function but which is given here in this question it is given it is given k times x minus 2x cube upon 3 now if you compare these two then easily we will get your required value of k how much yes it is correct k is equal to 3 finish in this we can easily find the value of k if you know the basic concept so for that it is very important to remember this formula cumulative distribution function of a continuous random variable then easily we will solve and we will get correct option k is equal to 3 now we will solve one more example so question number second if function is given x by 8 when x lies between 0 to 4 and 0 otherwise is probability density function of a continuous random variable x f of x is a cumulative distribution function associated with f of x then f of 0 0.5 is so we have to find the value of f of 0 0.5 for that we need to find cumulative distribution function 
So again, by definition, we can say f of x is equal to integration over, which is the lower limit here, zero. So we can start zero to x into f of x into dx, which is equal to integration over zero to x. The function is given here, x by eight into dx. So first, we find cumulative distribution function f of x by evaluating this integration with respect to x. So this is equal to 1 upon 8 we can take outside and we will evaluate integration of x with respect to x over the range 0 to x which is equal to 1 by 8 into integration of x with respect to x. So remember what is integration of x with respect to x? Correct, it is x square by 2 over the range 0 to x. Then we will write f of x is equal to by putting the upper limit and lower limit. Obviously here upper limit is x and when you put x is equal to x the terms will remain same x square by 2 minus when you put x is equal to lower limit will it become 0? So f of x will remain 1 by 8 into x square by 2. So this is f of x. Also this can be written as x square divided by 2 raised to 4. Understood? How I have written 2 raised to 4? Yes, correct. 8 can be written as 2 cube into 2, which is equal to 2 raised to 4. Now we have to find the value of f of 0.5. So just put x is equal to 0 0.5. And we know x is equal to 0 0.5 also can be written as x is equal to half. So if f of x is equal to k times e raised to minus 3x, when x is given greater than 0, and the function is 0 otherwise is probability density function then k is we have to find the value of k here by using given condition it is given that function is pdf probability density function and you know definition probability density function if f of x is the probability density function then integration of f of x with respect to x or minus infinity to plus infinity is always equal to 1 since the function is probability density function so which will satisfy this condition but here function is given k times e raised to minus 3x or x greater than 0 and 0 otherwise so this can be written as minus infinity to 0 over this range function is given 0 plus 0 onwards so 0 to infinity function is given k into e raised to minus 3x into dx is equal to 1 so some students may confuse how it is 1 because it is given that the function is probability density function so which will satisfy this condition integration of f of x over this range is always equal to 1 and uh, now we have substituted this value and simplified it. Next integration of 0 is 0 then it will remain integration over 0 to infinity k into e raised to minus 3x into dx is equal to 1 or direct also we can write this step. Then divide this integration with respect to x by taking k outside the integral integration of e raised to minus 3x any guess it is expected integration of e raised to minus 3x yes any guess yes you are correct it is e raised to minus 3x divided by minus 3 over the range 0 to infinity is equal to 1 now we we'll put the limits here put x is equal to upper limit upper limit is infinity so when we put here it will become e raised to minus infinity and what is e raised to minus infinity 0 so we get 0 here minus put x is equal to lower limit lower limit is 0 when you put x is equal to 0 here it will be e raised to 0 and what is e raised to 0? 1 so this will remain 1 upon minus 3 is equal to 1 now so simplify this minus minus of this will become plus so k into 1 upon 3 is equal to 1 and therefore multiplying throughout by 3 you will get direct value of k and which is equal to how much? 3. So this is your final answer. In this way, we will easily reach to your final answer. So your value of k is 
3. So here it was very important to know what is probability density function. So remember, if function is probability density function, then it must satisfy this condition. And with this, we will solve this example. We have solved this example and got the value of k. Question number 4. If function is given x square by 18 when x lies between minus 3 to plus 3. Otherwise, function is given 0. It is also given that it is probability density function. And question is find the probability of x less than 1. So let me explain you. So it is given that function is x square by 18 between minus 3 to plus 3. Over here, this interval it is given x square by 18. Otherwise, this is given 0. So we have to understand the range also. The function is defined from minus 3 to plus 3. Otherwise, the function is given 0. Is probability density function and then question is find the probability of x less than 1. Okay, we have to find the probability of x less than 1, which is equal to integration over see the lower limit of this range is minus 3. So minus 3 to 1 f of x into dx, which is equal to integration over minus 3 to 1. Function is given here x square by 18 into dx. Now we evaluate this one of the will take outside and we evaluate integration of x square with respect to x, which is equal to x cube divided by 3 over the range minus 3 to 1. Then simplify this can be written as 1 upon 18 into 3. 18 into 3 is 54. Then it will remain x cube. When you put x is equal to 1, we will get 1 cube is 1 minus put lower limit, which is lower limit minus 3. So minus 3 raised to 3 is nothing but minus 27. So minus and this might become plus. So it will be 1 plus 27. And what is 1 plus 27? 28. So final answer is 28 divided by 54. 28 divided by 54. Here we have solved few examples over probability distributions. Accordingly, if you practice, then automatically you will get confidence. So again I will suggest you, you must understand the basic concept, read every day, try to understand them and implement. Automatically you will solve such examples very easily and which will be helpful for your final preparation. Thank you. Thank you very much.